Hey everybody, you're about to watch an episode that was unfortunately filmed with a defective lens, which we didn't know until after it was recorded, so in a lot of shots it looks very bad. We're very aware of that. There is no need to go on your keyboard and type your comment, hey, parts of this episode Jordan, look really bad. We, think, we, we're honestly, aware. Do you think context is going to save you from the internet, Jordan? Probably not. <laughs> Welcome back, DPV TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and it has been quite the launch season. I mean, we've got so much APS-C stuff that's come out. We've got the new Canon cameras with their APS-C sensors and their full-frame lens mount. We've got the Fuji X2HS, which, by the way, Jordan is shooting me with. And, you know, Sony, they didn't release a new body, but they're like, we're going to be a part of this, too. They've released three new lenses, and that's what we're looking at today. So Sony have released three new wide-angle lenses. Got a really compact, darling little 11mm f1.8. We have a G-series 15mm f1.4, and then we've got their power zoom, 10 to 20 f4. So these are the things we're going to play with, and it's a lot to cover in one video. We aren't going to do our usual lens reviews here. What we're really going to do is focus more on how these lenses affect video and vlogging applications, because that's really what Sony is aiming these three lenses is at. So expect some of that today. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Okay, so we're vlogging now on the 11 millimeter lens. I've got image stabilization turned off because I want you guys to see the full field of view, but when we actually do our walk and talks, we will turn active stabilization on. It's important to understand that all three of the lenses today do not have image stabilization in the lenses, and on the ZV-E10, I don't have an IBIS unit, so this is gonna be a little bit tricky. But this is our full field of view. I mean, 11 millimeter does give you a nice wide angle. You can bring it closer if you want to fill someone's face, but that does tend to give them a, kind of that chubby, weird perspective there. Not very flattering, but if you've got a friend or a Jordan, there you go. It's nice to then be able to get a couple people in there. So if you're doing vlog interviews and things like that, this could be really, really good. Now, this is a very lightweight lens. The 11 millimeter is 180 grams, uh, you know, very easy to carry around, nice and small. Got a 55 millimeter filter thread on here for those ND filters. I will say though that it definitely does not have that G series moniker on it, but it still seems to be built well. We've got the rubber dust seal, uh, you know, nice hood design, and it does still have an autofocus switch and also a, a custom button. So you're not wanting for too many custom controls. All right, so now we're on the 15 millimeter here, and this does give us sort of a full frame equivalent of a 22 millimeter lens. Fantastic focal length, definitely more of a general purpose wide angle. And for vlogging, it's a little bit more of a typical frame. You know, I like this a little bit better. However, do keep in mind that if I was gonna walk with the ZV-10, I'm gonna turn on the active stabilization, and it is gonna crop a bit, and I have to be okay with that. You know, if I was using this on a body with IBIS though, I think this is a pretty nice focal length. Now this is a G series lens and the main thing that you notice here different from the other ones is this has a beautiful aperture ring. You've got an auto setting or you've got nice click stop apertures. And of course, if you look on the side of the lens, we can de-click that aperture ring. So fear not, if you're doing it for video, you don't have to have that annoying sound. And on this lens, we've got a 55 millimeter filter thread. You do have a custom function button on here as well, autofocus, manual focus switch, and it does have the dust seals as well. So it seems to be well built. Overall though, it's roughly the same weight. It is a little bit larger, but roughly only slightly heavier than the other two lenses. So it's still a really compact lens to carry around. All right, so now we're on the power zoom 10 to 20 millimeter. I'm at the 20 millimeter focal length right now, which is too tight for vlogging, unless you keep like really tight head and shoulders, but fantastic when I wanna show viewers what I'm walking through, like city streets or through the forest here, then you get a nice focal length for that. But let's now go all the way to 10 millimeters. Again, this is very wide for vlog work, but certainly gives you that nice wide angle perspective. Of course, the beauty of a zoom is we've got the versatility that we can change that zoom range as we need to. And on the 10 to 20 zoom, you can see we've got a 62 millimeter filter thread for those ND filters you're gonna to wanna to use. Now, this lens is also a G series, got nice controls, autofocus, manual focus switch, custom button, we've got a manual focus ring, we've also got our zoom ring and a zoom rocker on this as well. This lens does have dust seals. I mean, it is, again, well-built and amazingly still keeps the weight down to roughly around that 180 gram range, same as the 11 millimeter lens. So all three of the lenses we're playing with today are easy to carry around and fairly compact. All right, so let's talk about autofocusing speed on these three ultra wides. You can watch samples here while I talk about it. So these don't have XD linear motors. They're trying to save weight, but they still do have linear focusing motors. These are compact lenses, not a lot of glass to move. And you can see the autofocus is still very nice and snappy from close to infinity. I have no issues with these lenses autofocusing for photographic applications, but let's take a look at how smooth it is for video next. 
Okay, so as we've seen, the focusing motors are plenty fast for photographic applications, but those linear motors are also really nice because they're smooth for autofocusing during video, and it should be picking up on me right now, but that's also really useful if you come across a celebrity like, oh, is that Jordan Drake? Oh, so beautiful, oh my God, I'm so lucky. He's not just a specimen, he's a specimen man. Oh, oral hygiene is so sexy. Lucky floss. Now we've been seeing a lot of manufacturers making wide angle lenses that actually have good macro capabilities as well. But macro lenses, these three are not. So the 11 millimeter, the 10 to 20, they get around a one to five life size reproduction, not bad. The 15 millimeter, one to seven, so even worse. I mean, if you're doing products and vlogging stuff, you're gonna be fine. But if you're trying to like zoom in on little flowers and stuff and get that really three dimensional wide angle perspective, there are better choices out there. All right, let's talk about flare and sun stars on these three lenses. So first off, none of these lenses really deliver great sun stars. I mean, they're all kind of meh, but they do have different flare characteristics. So the 11 millimeter and the 10 to 20 look pretty similar to me. I mean, pretty good flare control. If you stop down, you kind of get a little bit of, you know, faint ghosting, but it's really quite minimal. It's the 15 millimeter that you really want to talk about here because it probably has the nicest sun stars out of the three lenses. But when stopped down, you do get some very apparent purple ghosting as you can see here. Now, as you open up your aperture, that largely goes away and otherwise it handles flare very well. But keep in mind, stop down, you're to start to see that ghosting pretty prevalently. Now we always like to talk about focus breathing with lenses, but especially when they're designed for video work. Focus breathing is again where as the lens focuses from near to far, you might actually see the whole frame change and the focal length move. And of course that's not good if you want to do focus pulls. Not a big deal for vlogging, but if you are going to use these lenses for video work, well I mean check out these examples here. This is an easy talk because all three of these lenses basically have zero focus breathing. It's very minimal and that's excellent for video style lens. Okay, so let's talk about sharpness next. And we're gonna start with the 11 millimeter lens here. I was actually really impressed with this. So first off, looking at the center, shooting wide open at f1.8, nice and crisp, no problem at all. In fact, when we stop down, you don't even really notice that much improvement. Looking in the corners, even wide open, the corners are pretty decent. You see a slight bit of improvement when you stop down, but overall, this is a lens that you can shoot wide open, no problems at all. I was really pleased with the performance there. Next, let's take a look at the 15 millimeter f1.4. And I figured, you know, 1.4 lenses, usually a little bit soft, wide open, but I almost thought I was looking at the 11 millimeter again. Looking at the centers here, wide open, it's still nice and crisp. Stopping down, again, not really that much improvement, maybe just a touch. We look at the corners wide open, decent performance in the corners, even shooting at 1.4. Stop down again, they sharpen up a little bit, just like you saw with the 11 millimeter, but again, it's the same story. All right, let's look at the 10 to 20 zoom. Starting at 10 millimeters, shooting wide open at f4. Again, center was nice. Stopping down to f8, I didn't really notice that much improvement, just a little bit. Corners again held up really well shooting wide open at f4 stopping down improves them slightly but these lenses seem to all be optimized to shoot wide open really really well now we look at 20 millimeter this is where things get just a little bit funky so first off the centers at f4 beautifully sharp stopping down to f8 don't notice much difference but the corners when we look at the corners shot wide open at f4 they're nice and crisp very decent when we stop down the lens I'm showing you here at f8, but even when I stop down to f5.6, the corners actually get softer. Uh, the, the centers are still staying nice and sharp, but those corners just seem to fall apart. And honestly, we're not sure why that is. It seems like a very strange effect, not something we've really seen on other lenses before. Okay, so let's talk about our final thoughts on these lenses. I've got the 11 millimeter on right now, and I think if I was gonna choose for vlogging, I would go with the 11 millimeter. It is a little bit wide, but again, the active steady shot that's on right now crops it, so I like having that extra range. I can always crop digitally afterwards as well, or bring the lens a little bit closer, but I like the sharpness characteristics of this lens. It was pretty resistant to flare out of the three lenses we tested, and so I think if you want a handy little compact vlog lens, this is a nice choice. All right, now we're on the 15 millimeter lens. Now this would not necessarily be a good choice for vlogging, I don't think. I mean, I'd go for the 11 millimeter. It's definitely more affordable. This is more expensive, but for photography, I think this 15 millimeter makes a lot of sense, you know? It's a bit too tight for vlogging, especially with the active steady shot as far as the focal range goes, but I love this as a general purpose wide angle for stills. And having that 1.4 aperture is absolutely gonna be great as well. So I would certainly consider it for that. The only issue really is you gotta kinda of watch that ghosting if you're stopped down, but if that's not an issue, if you're gonna do a lot of shots wider open, this is beautiful. 
And finally, we're on the 10 to 20 zoom. Now for photography, because it gets a little bit soft when you stop down at 20 millimeters, that might be a turn off. Although keep in mind that you don't often shoot these lenses at 20 millimeters, right? You're buying the zoom for the wide angle capabilities and it performed really nice there. For video applications though, if even if there is a weird thing with sharpness there, or maybe it's just this particular sample, it's not really a big deal because all three of these lenses are way sharper than 4K video would ever really need anyways. Otherwise, I think this is a great vlogging lens because it is so versatile, f4 is still perfectly usable, and it's very compact and lightweight. So this zoom certainly has a place in a camera bag. So it's an interesting time for the APS-C format. It's great to see a company not just come out with one lens, but three. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Now, I don't expect consumers are gonna buy all three of these lenses, but hopefully this video helps you guys decide which one of them might be the right choice for you. If you're just looking for a compact wide angle or you wanna get into doing a lot of vlogging yourself, please go to deepyearview.com. There are always fantastic articles there to check out. Leave your comments below. Uh, like our video and subscribe to the channel. We'd love that. And otherwise, I will be back here to see you all very shortly with another episode of Deep Review TV.